But first, breaking news in the Atlanta City Hall corruption case. The investigation is growing. We just got a copy of a new subpoena. Now, the feds want to see records for every member of former Mayor Kasim Reed's cabinet. The specific documents all involve leave time, requests, approvals, payouts, and all policies related to taking leave. The city has been in the feds' crosshairs for more than a year. The Justice Department originally subpoenaed more than one million documents as part of a bribery case tonight. The hits just keep on coming. More on this breaking story throughout the night on 11alive.com. Now to a story that thousands of you are sharing and commenting on. New video with crisp images showing a man suspected of animal cruelty. This video released by Atlanta police shows the man at a Chevron on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive in southwest Atlanta. Now, why are police looking for him? Because of this video. This man seen kicking a cat across the gas station parking lot like a football. The cat lands hard on the cement. The video was taken and uploaded to social media. It all happened around July 1st. Now, the man could face misdemeanor animal cruelty charges or even possibly a felony, but Hope Ford shows us why animal cruelty could be a sign of something even worse. There uh, are studies that show that there's a link between being violent toward animals and being violent towards humans. Animal cruelty and human violence, there is a documented connection. The vice president of training initiatives for the Humane Society said this, researchers as well as the FBI and other law enforcement agencies nationwide linked animal cruelty to domestic violence, child abuse, and even serial killings. Take this study from the Chicago Police Department. It says there is a quote, startling propensity for offenders charged with crimes against animals to commit other violent offenses towards human victims. In the study, 65% of people arrested for animal crimes had also once been arrested for battery of a person. And of 36 convicted multiple murderers, 46% admitted to prior animal torture. A different study shows that pet abuse is one of four predictors of domestic partner violence. And research shows up to 84% of women entering domestic violence shelters reported their partner either abused or killed their family pet. And in Georgia, there is a special provision in the animal cruelty law that allows judges to require people convicted of animal cruelty to receive a psychological evaluation, which is why Atlanta police is so concerned with this video and the man in it. Thanks, Hope. Now, if you know this man, please contact Crime Stoppers Atlanta. You'll find the number and more information right now on 11alive.com. Now, Ron Jones is here with our Speed Feed. Yeah, that's right, Vinny. And uh, with tonight's Speed Feed, a very scary, scary story. This is out of Cobb County tonight. And we can report there is a positive outcome to this story. This all started at a home in Kennesaw. Police say a man broke into a home and kidnapped a woman and her five-year-old daughter. Hours later, they were both rescued from the suspect's home in Jasper. Daniel Green faces multiple charges, including kidnapping. Facebook video shows officers holding down a 10 year old boy as his father is arrested. That video has since gone viral. I'm Joe Henke in Athens, Clark County tonight as those officers are now at the center of an internal affairs investigation. The boy's family said the boy was distraught as his father was being arrested and claim an officer slammed the boy onto a cop car. Police body camera footage shows the boy running at an officer, then lunging at him and landing on the car. The officers tonight remain on active duty as they're being investigated. A teen suspect accused of robbing four wedding guests in Brookhaven is now facing murder charges tonight after one of his victims, Christian Broder, died over the weekend. The search continues for missing UGA graduate Alvin Ahmed. The 25-year-old never made it home from his job at the Publix in Loganville on July 16th. I'm Caitlin Ross in the newsroom where Twitter exploded over a new 19-minute R. Kelly song called I Admit. Kelly sings he likes younger women but denies being a pedophile. He addresses the family of an Atlanta woman her family claims was kidnapped by Kelly, saying it was her own father who brought her to the show. Kelly's attorneys have not returned requests for comment. Move over, Blue Apron. Chick-fil-A is now launching their own brand of meal kit. Starting next month, customers can pick up a meal kit at the 150 locations across the Atlanta metro area. It is bloody. It is bitter. It is the fight to the death boxing match known as Georgia politics. I'm John Shearig at the state capitol, and by this time tomorrow night, 
we may know who the GOP nominee for governor will be. Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle or Secretary of State Brian Kemp. Voters go to the polls tomorrow, and Cagle and Kemp campaigned all across the state, warning voters that with a light turnout, this could be decided by a razor-thin margin. All right, that should be the top story tomorrow. Of course, the Republican runoff should be the top politics story of the day, but a colleague in the State House is stealing the thunder. Yeah, we're talking about State Representative Jason Spencer, a Republican from Woodbine, and if you don't know why, you must have missed his appearance on Showtime's Who is America last night. Yeah, and now people all over the state are calling for him to step down. So Jason Spencer is just the latest politician to say they were duped by comedian Sasha Baron Cohen. But for many people, Spencer's racial slur, screaming, and buttocks brandishing scenes yeah. were by far the most cringeworthy of them all. And tonight, some of the most powerful political forces in the state are calling for Spencer to resign, but he says no way. Right now, we want to know what you think. Go to 11alive.com slash vote. And in the meantime, our very own Doug Richards walks us through Spencer's scandalous TV appearance. I'm Jason Spencer. I'm an elected official in the state of Georgia. Republican Jason Spencer spends five eye-opening minutes on screen in the show appalling members of both parties. All you damn sin over in the Middle East. We are tired of you coming to America. Spencer says he was tricked into appearing with actor Sasha Baron Cohen, who plays the role of a security expert. In America, there is one forbidden word. It is the N-word. One moment, Spencer now, is seen shouting the N-word repeatedly. You have three seconds to attract attention. Go! <laughs> and seconds oh. later... Show me the batuk. No, trousers down. The actor convinces Spencer to drop his pants. Okay, go. America! Good. This spring, Jason Spencer lost his race for a fifth term in the legislature, giving him five months left to serve. But some critics say he should leave the legislature immediately. The reviews of his Showtime performance were harsh. Georgia Democratic Party Chairman DuBose Porter said it is difficult to distinguish between Representative Jason Spencer's bigotry and stupidity. A saddened and disgusted Governor Nathan Deal tweeted there was no excuse for Spencer's appalling and offensive performance. And Republican House Speaker David Ralston said Spencer disgraced himself with his reprehensible performance and should resign immediately. Well, that was my first time seeing part of that video, and it's all valid criticism. The episode put both Spencer and the state of Georgia on the map in the worst way. And you know what? 100,000 people searched Spencer's name after the episode aired last night. I was one of those people, yeah. and those Google searches have been staying on Twitter all throughout the day. Thousands Tens of thousands of them, right? And mm -hmm. here's what those Google searches likely turned up. 43-year-old Jason Spencer was elected to the Georgia State House in 2010. This is his fourth and last term now as he lost his primary election in May. Now, in 2016, Spencer filed and then withdrew a bill that critics said would have basically banned Muslims from wearing their veils in public. And last summer, Spencer picked a Facebook fight with former Georgia lawmaker LaDawn Jones, saying people who want Confederate statues removed will likely be found missing in the Okie Finoki. But you know what? Uh, when yeah. it comes to him resigning, yeah. he says that he's going to wait until his term is up, and that's five months away. But I think he should It just... looks like people who are voting in our poll say he should resign, 95%. Yeah, 95%, and rightfully so. We just saw a little clip of that video. We didn't no, see I, No, Ron, I saw the whole show. Ron, yeah. you don't want to see the whole <laughs> really? thing. You is might that not bad? No. Yeah. Remember that song, Bad Moon Rising? Yeah. Oh. That's what we saw. All right. Never heard All right. That. Late fee, back in 60 <laughs> seconds. With a closer look at a special Atlanta police unit that is back in the headlines tonight.
One of Atlanta's elite police units back in the spotlight, but not for good reasons. Ron Jones takes a look at Apex and its history in the Atlanta Police Department. Ron? Yeah, the Apex unit has only been around since uh, 2011, 2012. Their focus is hunting down and targeting violent criminals. Apex, the Atlanta Proactive Enforcement and Interdiction Unit. They specialize in identifying and targeting violent crime trends throughout the city. These are not your typical men and women in blue. These men and women are looking for the worst of the worst. No, they're going after violent street thugs who are terrorizing local neighborhoods. Street criminals who are involved in gun violence, robbery, murder. Those are the folks that they target in Atlanta. Wearing a specialized green uniform, they often work in the shadows, identifying crime patterns and arresting criminals. I got it! I got it! But recently, Apex was thrust into the bright light of controversy when the cell phone video emerged showing one of their officers, identified as Sergeant Padilla, fighting with a suspect accused of possessing a bag filled with marijuana. Police say Padillo is trying to apprehend Harold Barnwell near the corner of Joseph E. Boone and Lanier Street. Barnwell's mother tries to intervene, but is pushed to the ground. Barnwell is eventually arrested and is facing felony obstruction and possession of a controlled substance. His mom, Jennifer, is also facing misdemeanor obstruction. But is this a typical day for the Apex unit? Hmm. Now, Apex, Ron, wasn't always called Apex, right? They used to be the Red Dog Unit? Yeah, the Red Dog Unit was way back in the day. They disbanded it, but that happened back in the 1980s, back in the 1990s. Cocaine era, Vinny, this was when cocaine was running rampant across America. And Red Dog stands for Run Every Drug Dealer Out of Georgia. They were very heavy-handed, cost the city hundreds of thousands of dollars in lawsuits. And uh, they disbanded, I would say, back in the 1990s. And then Apex emerged later on, similar to Red Dog. You know, they're targeting some of these drug dealers and stuff like that. But they're trying to distance themselves from the Red Dog era. A little less controversy. Yeah, a lot, lot less Although we had a little controversy here. All right.